This is Windburn Electronics DR600 airband monitor. Um, quite a few of those have been sold actually, and they were sold from a, a, an outfit outside of Birmingham Airport. Um, they're a nice, sort of basic, sort of typical homemade looking um, radio. Um, they worked on an internal um, battery you could buy to fit inside the, the set or an external 12 volt supply, this one's running on an external 12 volt supply. Um, simple single conversion um, AM receiver uh, with the option of crystals, uh, which I haven't got in this set, but the crystals plugged in here, and here's presets, and you could select the preset frequency you wanted, um, and then you had a stable frequency. They are prone to drift. If you haven't got the, of the crystal in like this one hasn't, they are, they are, they're prone to drifting um, with temperature. Um, not hugely, and it's not really a big problem, but um, they, they do drift. Um, single, as I say, single conversion IF, 10.7 uh, MHz, um, and they are a bit prone also to um, sideband frequencies. You know, if you've got a strong signal um, next to uh, the signal you're tuned into, it, it, it can bleed over. Um, it's not normally a problem unless you're listening listening in a sort of very congested area like next to an airport or something um, and this set has is prone to sort of cross talk and bleeding over from other other um, other frequencies as I, as I live quite close to Gatwick Airport um, it does often if you tune into one frequency you'll often hear another frequency cross cross over um, but the idea of this uh, video tonight is just to do a quick alignment on it just to try and keep the I always try and keep the IFs as selective as possible. By doing that I basically try and keep the uh, IF frequency as narrow as possible. Obviously it's only communication um, and it's AM. It's, it's a simple process to do. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to inject a 10.7 meg into it uh, and then see if I can peak these um, IF coils here. Um, I've got no manual or anything for it but I assume that this is the on the IF three coils and these maybe these two here are the IF coils. Can't really go a lot wrong with a set like this. Um, it either works or it doesn't really. But so let's give that a go. Let's um, switch the Marconi on. I mean this this has been on for a while, so it should have settled down. Obviously the Marconi has got a cold start, but that shouldn't be a problem. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to inject a um, 10.7 meg uh, AM, uh, let's say 45% uh, modulation at uh, carrier, carrier frequency is 10.7, so that's right. Let's say let's start at 1 volt and just see how we get on. Um, it's pretty poor at rejecting I, even the IF um, bleed in, so it should be quite easy to set it up. As you can hear the tone onto the set and we're definitely into the IF because the tuning doesn't make any difference at all. So next thing to do is just run through the trimmers and see if we can get the uh, level as loud as possible. So we'll start off with the uh, core here at the back or the front should I say. Just give it a little tweak. Okay, you can hear it go quiet there. It's really peaked there. Important to keep the level as low as possible. We don't want the uh, AGC way uh, automatic uh, level control cutting in. So, so that's pretty good. Let's drop the level back to 500 millivolts. Okay, then just check again. That's pretty good. Let's go to the next IF can. I'm getting a bit of a heterodyne from something coming in on the aerial. That's not a problem, it's just shift it off tune. Pretty much peaked. Okay, we've got this next core here, which uses a slightly different transformer. Um, find a suitable tool, bear with me a minute, whilst I find a tool to adjust it with. 
lost my favourite trimming tool somewhere. I've got a selection of tools here and I can't find the one I want. It's pretty rolling about the floor somewhere. Okay, let's try this one. This should fit. And I'll tweak again to see if we can get it any peaks any higher. Right. Should really be done with a, um, a voltmeter, really, but uh, it seems to have peaked fairly well. I think the uh, coil at the back is probably uh, an os for the local os not, not local oscillator, maybe the aerial trimmer. Let's give that a tweak. What frequency are we on? Let's go down to a low frequency and trim that to a. So, what I'll probably do now is I'm going to inject a. Let's get a 118. Oh, you can see that display is not very clear with this. Yeah, it's 180 megahertz, let's go 118 megahertz. Okay, nice and strong signal. Drop the level back to um, 100 millivolts. Okay, 50 millivolts then. We want the level to drop back so we get a bit of noise. 20 millivolts. Okay, 5 millivolts. 1 millivolt. Okay. Let's give that a tweak, see what that does. Let's try this with a plastic trimmer. We're adjusting the plastic trimmer on here. Oh, makes the display go a bit wonky. No, no, it's alright. No, it's not gripping, so it's fine with a tool. Let's try this one. No, it can't get back. What's the problem with this? These sort of little tiny transformers with these little, very short lugs. You can actually get a grip on the on the lug without damaging it. Okay, let's try this one. This one looks better. Okay, it's getting weaker. I think it's peaks as best that we're going to get it. So that should be okay, actually. It's just Let's try a, a carrier frequency of 135 meg. Shift it up to 135. Trying to get it so you can see the display. It's not very easy. There we go. Find 135. Should have carrier frequency. There it is. And then we'll peak the uh, the caps here. For maximum gain. Yeah, they're pretty well peaked. You see how mar marked are the caps? I don't know if you can see those black mark lines on the capacitors. Pretty well peaked actually. This is the, uh, the control, this is the basically the local oscillator runs from here. That's the local oscillator, and there's a, a, a coupled. Uh, coil here that feeds back to the uh, to the display that shows you the frequency. It takes into account the IF and things like that, and uh, gives you the readouts of the frequency. So that's it, really. Um, let's turn the generator off, um, and it should work okay. Zero four zero degrees. Okay, that's the, one of the volmets. Um, try one two four two two, which is Gatwick Tower. Okay, just wait a minute, that should work. So, I mean, the set's... It's got a nice sound, actually, because it's got a quite a sort of chunky box to it, and it's got a, a reasonable spice, a box that, a three-inch speaker, um, and a fairly fairly powerful amplifier. It's actually got quite a nice tone to it. But, uh, it's a good radio, and I, I like it. I mean, I've had it in the workshop now for oh, a couple of years, and it's uh, it's been very reliable. Um, and as I say, they've got a, quite a good following. Um, it's got the typical British build quality to it, you know, the early, sort of like the, slightly, um, not antiquated, but slightly sort of homemade look to it. But, uh, as you can hear, it's working fine. It's only working on a, a, a taxi mag, mag mount that's mounted on the garage roof, so it's uh, not the best area in the world. And we were about, probably about 13 or 14 miles from Gatwick Airport. So we're not actually hearing the ground-based frequent uh, transmissions, but we are getting the aircraft on the ground, so it works fine. 
Anyway, um, thanks for watching and uh, more to come.